Hey everyone, welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Chade Arena. The old saying goes, nothing in life is guaranteed except for death and taxes, or something like that. Well, could there be a few people out there who learned how to cheat death? Well, I would want to meet them to see if they still pay taxes. Well, we're gonna go into a deep dive of this speculation with this top 10 list of people who might be immortal. Like always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. And without taking any longer, Let's get into it. Number 10, Memnon. We're kicking this list off with one of the greatest warriors ever. Memnon was said to be an immortal warrior from Greek mythology, who is one of the best warriors in the land, second only to the great Achilles. He's an Ethiopian king and really the most prevalent African figure in all of Greek mythos. It's said that he was killed by the only man who was a better warrior than him, Achilles, who might have also been immortal. Maybe it was like South Park rules. It takes an immortal to kill an immortal. Number nine, Merlin. We all know Merlin. He's one of the most famous characters from English myth. Being the guy who helped King Arthur, it must be easy to become king when you have a wizard in your back pocket. But what if he isn't myth? What if the character is real and is still walking around to this day? There's evidence of characters like Merlin or Merlin himself popping up again and again through English history. Some people believe that he's still alive and still protecting the royal family. Maybe if he's still alive, he should retire from protecting some of the richest people in the world and help out the rest of us. Why not cast a spell that gives me a good night's sleep for once? Number eight, Hercules. One of the buffest dudes in history. If you don't know the story of Hercules, he was basically a demigod and he wanted to be a god. And the gods told him, if you want to be a god, you gotta show everyone how much of a stud you are. And he did. He killed a lion with his bare hands, then he killed a multi-headed fire-breathing hydra, and he went to the underworld and captured the gatekeeper of the underworld. This dude's a legend, and his core strength must have been insane. Now the story goes that he was never given his wish and granted godhood, but many people believe that the myth is wrong, and this is just the story that was passed around. That the true story is that he was gifted his rightful god power and immortality. As long as he never told a soul, he would keep his godhood. I mean, you wouldn't want him to tell anyone, because then there would be a bunch of people trying to kill stuff, trying to become gods. Number seven, Sir Galahad. One of the most famous knights of the round table. The original boys club. I bet they all met in a tree house. You had to climb a rope ladder to get into it. You could only get in if you knew the secret password and there was a sign on the door that said no girls allowed. I might be mixing up King Arthur's knights with the little rascals. Anyways, Sir Galahad was the illegitimate son of Sir Lancelot and Elaine of Corbetic. And it said he is one of the people who has found the Holy Grail. Drinking from said grail is supposed to grant the person immortality. Now just like Merlin, Galahad is supposed to be one thing of legend, but some people believe that the knights did exist and are still in charge of secret underground cults to this day. If this is real, I would want footage of someone putting Galahad in one of Elon Musk's rockets and his face as he gets shot into space. Nothing like a 1000 year old man seeing what space looks like. Number six, Conan O'Brien. Let's take a hard left turn out of myth and turn into something that might be one of the strangest on the list. Late night TV show host Conan O'Brien. Why you may ask? Well it's because of this picture. This is a comparison picture between Conan and a Civil War soldier. They are eerily close to each other. Maybe Conan is closer to Wolverine than the hilarious ginger comic we have all come to know and love. What if all his jokes are just a way he can cover up his PTSD from fighting in centuries of wars? I mean, good for him. To go from war vet to American celebrity, that's a big jump that almost no one could do. Maybe back on the battlefield, no one thought he was funny. So he became immortal out of sheer willpower, just so he could stay alive long enough to find his audience. Number five, James Bedford. If you're going to die, but you have faith that in the future, they'll be able to bring you back to life, then why not throw your body into a giant freezer? James Bedford was the first person ever to be cryogenically frozen. He was an American psychology professor at the University of California and wanted his body to be preserved for later days, just in case they ever figured out a way to bring frozen people back from the dead so they could walk around again. 
If this was ever to happen, he would be first in line. He passed away in 1967 and right after he was pronounced legally dead, they threw him in a big chest freezer and set it to Ice Age. I'm sure it was more scientific than that, but you get the idea. Now we haven't come across the technology to resurrect this guy, but if we do, he's gonna get the Captain America treatment and be very close to being immortal. Number four, Hugh Glass. Have you ever seen The Revenant? The movie where Leonardo DiCaprio has the worst weekend ever? Well, in that movie, he plays frontiersman Hugh Glass. Now, Hugh Glass was mauled by a bear and left for dead and had to trek for miles and miles with broken bones and brutal wounds and survived. How did he do this? Well, the history books said he did this with grit, determination, and pure survivalist instincts. But the deep, dark corners of the internet have other opinions. Some people are pushing the idea that he's an immortal or has some sort of Deadpool healing factor. This would allow him to survive such a brutal attack and make it back to full health. And if this is true, he might still be alive to this day, keeping his healing ability secret from the public. Number three, Jack Lucas. One of the biggest bad all time, this guy literally might be unkillable. I don't want to trash talk him because I'm pretty sure he would find me and come beat the hell out of me. Jack Lucas fought in World War II and while serving, he jumped on two Japanese grenades and survived both explosions. And not like barely even survived, he kept serving in the army. Maybe back then, Japanese craftsmanship wasn't what it is now. After this, he became a paratrooper and on one of his jumps, his chute didn't deploy. Now you think plummeting to the earth would surely just kill you. Not Jack Lucas. His buddies found him alive and well. This dude is probably like a werewolf or a robot or like a robot werewolf. Number two, Roy Benavides. We're gonna stay on this trend of people who could beat up anyone's dad with Roy Benavides. Roy Benavides was a special forces officer. He stepped on a landmine in 1965 and he was told he would never walk again. And he was like, not only am I gonna walk again, I'm gonna go back and fight in war again. And he did. He fought in the Vietnam War. During one battle, he was leading a small troop and they were under attack by over a thousand Vietnamese soldiers. By the time the fighting was done, he had been wounded by either gunfire, knives, or shrapnel 37 times. 37! He was pronounced dead and put in a body bag. Then, he came back to life and unzipped the body bag he was inside. Death probably looked at this guy and was like, nah, you're too much for me. We're trying to build a nice neighborhood over here. You stay alive. Number one, Tsutomu Yamaguchi. What's the worst week you've ever had? Whatever it is, I bet it's not as bad as this guy. Tsutomu Yamaguchi was in Hiroshima in 1945 when the first atomic bomb dropped. He obviously survived, I mean he's on our list of immortals. He did sustain some injuries, his skin was burned and one of his eardrums was ruptured. But for an atomic bomb dropping, that's like leaving relatively unscathed. So he was injured and he went home to Nagasaki. Three days later, he was at work sharing his crazy story of how he saw the atomic bomb get dropped. And then if you know your history, the second atomic bomb was dropped and the dude survived again. He took back to back atomic bomb bombings and walked away with an earache. This dude could very well be immortal or at least radiation proof. Well that's our list. Let us know in the comments any crazy immortal stories you might have. Like always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. As always, I've been your host Chaterena, and I'm gonna go stare in the mirror and watch myself slowly age. Bye.